Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Southdown Garage. My name is Kurt and today we're going for a drive because my buddy is picking up a new work truck. Why? Because his bit the biscuit. We're taking the Explorer. All right, so we've got some winter gear. We've got tools. I don't actually have my scanner, which I actually need. So let's go back in the house and grab that. You always want to plug into a vehicle when you're going to buy it because anybody has a scanner, they're $80. You're looking to make sure that someone hasn't cleared the codes before you got there. And how you do it is on a, on the, a good decent scanner it will tell you if all of your parameters are met and that will tell you if somebody had just recently cleared the codes it will tell you that because a lot of times you can clear codes before you sell a vehicle I'm sure you know or you know you want to make sure stuff like the check engine light actually illuminates on the dash that's another trick that people like to use it's pretty dirty so you have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself because I've bought in so many vehicles and I know what I usually get into. Like my BMW, for instance, it, uh, it had a lot of issues. Didn't know there was water damage. That's a, that's a nice little gift. So you're always gonna find things that you don't expect. But stuff like water damage, you can dry out. Engine stuff, major engine issues, is gonna cost you so much money. Like, Car stuff, if you have to dry out the interior, that's time, right? If you're dealing with an engine issue, it's gonna take you a lot more time if you wanna do it yourself and you're not so familiar with it and then all the power to you, but you're probably buying something because you don't have the time to do that. What I'm trying to get at is you don't want any drivable issues with a vehicle. You can sometimes deal with a lot more other stuff aesthetically and, and stuff in the, from the interior than you can from a vehicle that's gonna break down on you and you, you don't need that. So you're probably using it to get to work, you're probably using it for work. So and that's what the purpose of this video is. We're gonna go up there, we're gonna take a look at the vehicle that he's looking to buy and we're gonna run through a few things. It's a uh, 550 gas, we've looked at a Chevy Silverado. The only reason we're potentially looking at the Ford, he's a landscaper so it has a dump box where the Chevy didn't. The price point is fairly decent for that truck because uh, we all know that prices for vehicles is like a second mortgage. Like, my goodness. Anyways, enough blah, blah, blah. Let's uh, hop in here, go pick up my buddy Avery. I got to make a quick stop and return that box from Rock Auto. Let's go pick up Avery and let's get on the road. We're in beautiful Merritt right now on our way to Kelowna. Look at the sun. So we're just making a stop off before we head over the connector. It's absolutely the most gorgeous day we could possibly think of to go for a drive. And uh, we just had to make a stop here to grab coffee and then over there to grab food. Now we're gonna grab a bite to eat and see what the connector has because sometimes that can be the fun road. So when you're on a long trip, you want to find something to talk about. So we decided to talk about things that you shouldn't tell your wife. <laughs> or why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that would be kind of like <laughs> amusing like, so when your wife's upset and she's really angry, the best thing you wanted to say is calm down. You need to, you need to calm down. We're just point gonna out, point out that it's probably her lady. That's right. Yeah. Point out what what uh, oh it's yeah it's that calendar time. Irrational behavior. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's your hormones. That's right. <laughs> or you're you're only angry because um, because you're not well organized and that's why you're running behind right now. You would manage your time a little better. You wouldn't be in this situation, and your 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 temper level would be at far uh, more manageable levels. So, That's right. Sorry. Uh, maybe also you need an O'Henry bar. It might be something to do with blood sugar. No, it's okay. That's okay too, honey. <laughs> the important thing is, is I'm here to manage you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Manage you. Yeah. Some people call that controlling, but. <laughs> In the work world, they call it managing. Yeah. That's right. It's gonna be intense driving into that. Oh, wow. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. oh that's so thick. Fair. <laughs> Mint. I've never seen again. 
Yeah. Well, we're gonna lose the vehicle in front of us pretty quick here. Oh my goodness. This is how wonderful this fog is out here. We're driving around with four ways on. As you can see from the video I'm showing you now, look at how dense it is. Oh my goodness. So the connector, uh, if you've never driven through towards Kelowna, can be pretty treacherous. So if you ever drive over the Coquihalla and you're like, I barely made it, don't go over the connector in the same day. It's definitely not the way to go. So we drove over the Coquihalla. It was pretty sunny, wasn't it? It was. It was beautiful. And then we come to the connector here and there are spots where we encountered vehicles doing 50 kilometers an hour in a hundred zone. That tells you how bad the fog is here. Uh, so we're just gonna slowly take our time. We might even go back a different route so we won't take, might not take the Coquihalla back. We might go Hope Princeton. So it might be a little bit longer of a travel but we won't have this. Okay, so we're in Kelowna. We're taking a look at this truck here. So what you want to do is you want to do a thorough walk around. Now it's pretty gross and dirty out, but just because it's winter. So you want to check things like wheel bearings. You give it a shake. As you walk around, you want to take a look, see if there's any abnormal things. I don't see a whole lot of wear. The nice thing is this was a city truck, so um, everything should be pretty good. Oh, that frame is nasty. You might have to lift the bed and take a look under the frame. So I found out this is from Alberta, so one of the things that you want to check when it's out of province, because BC is the best one for no rust, is you're going to check the frame. Uh, the one thing we found is that sounds pretty sick, so you can hear the different sounds of metal, and that's pretty much it. Like a, that's that's falling apart there, so that will have to be get replaced. And then you want to go through and check all the spring perches, make sure those sound all the same. You're gonna have some surface rust, but as as long as it's not anything above surface rust, it can all be cleaned off and then repainted and then eliminate the rust. But that's the biggest thing you're gonna see on a truck, especially one from out of province. Now the other thing is you you pulled the vehicle report. Do you want to? Show me that one portion of that vehicle report. On the vehicle report, you can see all the things that have been done. So the main thing that we're looking for, exhaust manifold, exhaust manifold gaskets. They also did a timing chain tensioner. Every, also all that's done. So that means that this guy's actually spent some decent money on some of the repairs. Now we've sort of gone through everything other than me crawling underneath the vehicle to take a look. We've plugged the scanner in take a look so we have no engine codes we have three instrument panel codes Let's see if there's anything else well it shows that okay so any lock brake system brake fluid was low is that oh that's that's new so that's probably just an old code and readiness monitor this is the one you want to look for so this tells you if somebody has done any resets so this is all completed showing that test completed so it shows that Nothing has been reset recently, so all there are no check engine lights or anything else that would have been not here based on some clearing codes. So we know that is there. So from the engine side, it's pretty good. The only, the only issues we have is from the frame side. The other issue is in the engine compartment. So there's an issue inside the power distribution block. So they wired in a relay for the start function so this is a awareness if it's if on these things the chip key has to turn everything on not just the starter so it doesn't disable the starter so if that's done and and you're worried about someone bypassing that let's say uh, you can't do it on these vehicles it shuts a pump off the fuel pump off it shuts everything else off so that's all okay uh, I just have to brave it and look under the vehicle and see what the frame looks like. Uh, check the transmission oil while it was running. Uh, the transmission oil smells brand new. Like the brake fluid looks good. So power steering fluid is decent. I mean, it probably needs to get changed. So that's minor, but uh, that part's okay. So 
uh, everything came back on the Carfax. You always want to do one of those. And there, there's no decks or anything on it, so that's also that's a huge positive. I'm just going to take a look at a couple more things. Like I said, uh, I have no issues with suspension that I've found, but now the next step after we look underneath and check and make sure there's nothing glaring is to take it for a drive and see how it feels. We're learning about a Ford, first of all. I'm having trouble with that. And then secondly, we're trying to drive this thing over bumps. We know what condition the um, frame is like, as you can see here. It's uh, it's showing surface rust. However, you cannot put anything through it, so none of my, my pry bar would not go through anything. So that's what I was checking. It might have looked like I was being kind of weird. And it's like, well, what point is that? Well, you want to find out if there's any rust that has actually gone through because this is not a province vehicle. Um, it looks like there is a lot of work to make sure that you get it up to its new standard and make sure you stop that rust and if you do that then you'll have a good vehicle but um, is that what you want to do? Maybe, maybe not. If you're, if, you're that, if you're not comfortable spending the time because it's basically just time, anybody can do it themselves, you just have to grind it down to the bare, to metal and then put the special rust, rust proofing on and then you're gonna have a good vehicle. Uh, if that's not what you wanna do, then you, this is when you move on. But if, this, if you're okay with that, you could probably get, get some money off of the price of the vehicle. So we're gonna see, see how that goes first. If the guy can't move a decent amount, like not like, I'm not talking like half price here. A few thousand dollars, if he's not gonna do that, then we'll have to reevaluate. It's right, right? Yep, perfect. And then we'll reevaluate. Man, it is so foggy out here in Kelowna, oh my goodness. I remember uh, Big White being this foggy, but I've never remembered uh, Kelowna being this foggy. However, I don't ever spend much time out here in the winter, so I guess maybe that's why. <laughs> so we did find some connections under the hood that need to be cleaned up uh, with the rust under the cab that we have here and then Everything else seemed tight when we drove it. Um, if you have a jack with you, you can check that out. But you, you're you really looking for something glaring. And like, you can usually check stuff like that by like grabbing the wheels. Like I, I showed you at the beginning of the video and you just haul on it like that. Um, so if that's not an issue, checking all the electrical, making sure, especially the connections are good and just making sure there's nothing that looks green that you need to deal with right away. Uh, I mean, the body is pretty good shape. There's not a whole lot of, of body rust. I just noticed a little bit by the headlight. It's a small, thin piece, easy to fix. So my buddy's gonna go inside. He's gonna try to negotiate and uh, we'll see what happens. My, maybe this is gonna be for him, maybe it won't be. And he can always come out here and we can talk. And we'll just see. So uh, hopefully this buying process was interesting for you guys. Um, I've never done something like this before, so I figured why not try it out. Uh, it was a nice trip up to the Okanagan anyways. I'm gonna go visit family while I'm here. We're gonna have coffee and I hopefully can find a bathroom soon because I got to pee. Oh, here he comes. So a thousand bucks off basically. Whoa, I mean, it's a bit of work. So it's, it's up to you to, gotta call the boss. I've learned the wrong way to do things. When you bring home a vehicle without talking to the wife, I can tell you it doesn't work well. So he's just talked to his wife. His wife said, go for it. He's gonna see, cause you know, car sales, person of him is going to see if he could get it the $2,000 down and we'll go from there but like realistically it's a good truck and 
if we do get it then we'll show you some videos on on how to fix the rust on your vehicle if if that's something you want to see then hey make sure you follow along because this is this is something that anybody can do right you just need a grinder and some paint and, and time and patience and realistically there's no holes there's rust formed there's nothing breaking through but if you're from california that would probably be a no-go for you but for here in canada it's not that bad uh from uh, from alberta standpoint out of province it's really good at really good so it's let's see what happens let's see if he gets it down and we'll find out if we've got a project coming up or if this was just a one-off video you never know eh well it's the next day where um my buddy got his truck uh downside is still at Kelowna there was a bit of a travel advisory yesterday and we ended up having to uh, spend the night. So I was supposed to contact some family while I was here and say, hey, let's meet for coffee. And then I contacted him and said, hey, let's come over and <laughs> stay the night. <laughs> Is it family good for that? That's what happened. Um, yeah, the travel advisory came in. The fog was so bad that you couldn't see. It said zero visibility and we just made the call stay in town we were gonna stay at a hotel but family was like no no, no come stay with us <laughs> but yeah hey you know what what's family for you haven't seen him in five years and you come and you text him while you're driving up and saying hey you guys want to meet for coffee later <laughs> yeah it's kind of nice little <laughs> unexpected trip Later today, we'll try to head home and see how this thing does. And and then I'll tell you what happened with this truck because we had some insurance issues and learned something new about um, F-550s or, you know, that, that size of a truck. Didn't know before. So right now I'm in my cousin's house. And the funniest part about this whole thing is my buddy had to give a conference today. So I just want to sort of show you the setup that he had to deal with today because he had to borrow a suit from my cousin, um, try it on, make sure it fit. And my cousin and him are fairly similar in size. So it's just like, this is basically what we set up for him. The blank canvas behind, which, you know, this gives a weird light, but you know, the day of Zoom and everything else that we've been dealing with over the last year, um he had to somehow make this work in person so yesterday it was kind of funny um his son's like it, when everything sort of went sideways his son's like why are you both laughing <laughs> because it's like when things go this bad it's just like people may look from the outside and and wonder if <laughs> this has been helped along and by no means did this get helped along other than the fact that I didn't plan for something like this to happen. Neither did he. So it's just kind of amusing um, so that he, we had this set up and it was just like, can he get a suit? Can he do the conference from here? Oh man. But you did great, Avery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody would have known unless you told them you were in Kelowna that you were in Kelowna. <laughs> I haven't seen my cousins in like five years because I'm a terrible family member. Okay, I'm, I'm just busy. Let, let's go with that. That's my excuse. I contacted him and I was like, funny story. This is what's going on. We ended up traveling to his place. It's the first time I've been to his new house. We spent the night playing board games and this and that. And how, you know, it just turned out to a really fun time. Of course, None of you guys saw that part because, you know, there's only, there is a level of, of privacy I want to give other people. Myself, I can choose my privacy, but, you know, even my buddy Avery, I didn't, I think I did enough this weekend. What happened that caused us to stay in Kelowna? That's the part of the story that's very humorous, which led to more and more and more setbacks and and struggles and my buddy and I just bursting into laughter because this was so hilarious because I 
I've gotten used to things not going right, whether that makes me a person that fails a lot or things just don't go right. I'll leave that to the comments to tell me. What was funny is we learned something about insuring a vehicle of <coughs> 550. With a work truck, you're required to have a, a commercial permit. Uh, I'll run something across here to tell you exactly what it is because I can't remember right now. So we found out we don't have one, we need one. So when they, when he told the insurance company last night, hey guys, um, you know what? I'm using this for work. I'm gonna be towing a trailer. I do, this is what I do for work. And they're like, whoa, it has to, it has to have that designation. You, I think it's a, a highway safety code number. I think that's what it was. So he needs to apply for one. He needs to wait. It's about six to eight weeks for him to get one. And they're like, well, why don't you just put a day permit on? And I literally said to them, what happens if we can't make it home tonight? Oh my goodness, thank goodness we said that because we didn't. So this process, the insurance company didn't know how to insure his vehicle because it is a work truck. It's going to be used for work. Uh, they had to label for pleasure, but because they know it's a work truck, apparently there were some issues. It took them calling like, a few people and I got to be honest with you there were super sweet ladies helping us out I really appreciate everything they did they eventually found a way to let us take it home and they made sure to put in the comments that we had to do all this stuff to make sure uh, it is compliant and of course when you're when you run your own business you want to make sure you're in compliance so he's gonna do that when he gets home because that's super important so that's it took about two hours and during the two hours, the, the ladies were like, oh, you guys are driving home over the connector with a two-wheel drive truck? Like, are you even mental? Yes, I guess so. We looked at the weather report. It said zero visibility, uh, fog advisory was in. And then we looked at Highway 3, and Highway 3 was bad. It had snowy sections with ice. And I'm like, no, we're not taking a two-wheel drive that way. Mud, snow tires aside, two-wheel drive. I don't take my truck out in the winter not a chance. I tried it once and I had to get towed by another Dodge and funny enough Chevy couldn't tow it out but that's another story. This is what we have coming back. It went from fog, it went, the Kelowna was so foggy and now look at it like my goodness I gotta be honest with you we live in the most beautiful part of the world. You can go from snow to no snow in such a short period of time. Google says it's about a two and a half hour drive which yeah right. And plus my buddy's truck it's a work truck, so it's a little bit slower. It's got a dump box on the back, so like, we're not in a hurry. We're taking a t we're taking our time. We're enjoying ourselves, and this is what a road trip and, and going to get a vehicle is all about. That's what happened to extend our trip a bit longer. This is why I love the Ford Explorer ST. It's hilarious because I've got the Ford hubcaps on. Now I'm not trying to impersonate a police officer, so let's get that straight right now, but I've got a whole line of vehicles behind me and this guy is edging up beside me right now, deciding whether or not he should pass me and he's stopping right by my driver's door. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on and sing it with me, Paw Paw. Car wash. Ain't like car wash. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Southdown Garage. This was a lot of fun for me. I've been suggested this for a while to go up and have some fun like this. And it just so happened that it dragged out a little bit longer and I got to spend some time with family and friends. It turned into an enjoyable weekend. My wife didn't know that this was going to happen. I just thought that, eh, not possible, but I should know better. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you wanna see more with this F550, please hit the subscribe button because we will have more videos coming out for it. As always, everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Take care and we'll see you on another episode of Southdown Garage. Bye for now.